Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes and welcome to another Swaga video. So I'm back here with another 5v5 counter video for you. Now you will be able to find these and all my other 5v5 counters on my Swaga for Life tool. If you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. There'll be link in description below. But for today's video, I'll be going up against Sith Eternal Emperor teams uh, using Darth Vader. Uh, now I've been testing this now for a few days uh, in Arena as well as GAC. So I just want to show you like three different battles in this video. There isn't a whole lot you need to really understand uh, about mechanics for this counter because it's really straightforward. Vader does what Vader does and you know it's pretty much straightforward this counter for you. So in the first battle uh, I'll show you uh, Darth Vader versus uh, Sith Eternal with uh, Sith Triumvirate. This, at least from my experience, is the most common team I see in Arena. Second one is uh, again from Arena, uh, but this one will have Malak in there, as well as uh, Bastila Fallen. And then in the last battle I'll actually show you uh, the first time I tried that counter from Grand Arena. Um, because in Grand Arena often I would see Sith Eternal with those leftover Sith uh, that you know people had to gear up to unlock Sith Eternal. So I have three battles still for you. Uh, before each battle, I'll show you the mods uh, for, from both teams, just that you can see uh, what's going on here. So the first battle got a Relic 7 Sith Eternal Emperor, and his speed is at 545. Relic 5 Sith Trooper here, speed at 238. Relic 4 Scion, and his speed is at 231. Uh, we've got Relic 3 Nihilus, speed at 258. And Relic 3 Treya, he's at 251. And now this is the my team here, got Darth Vader here uh, at Relic 7, I have heavy modded for critical damage and potency and speed. Relic 1, Wat Tambor, modded for potency and speed. Relic 6, Thrawn, just speed, nothing else for him. Relic 3, Treya, modded for some speed and protection. And Relic 1, Sith Empire Trooper, modded for defense and protection. Alright, let's hop into the battle now, uh, let me talk you through it. Uh, now, first things first, weapon tech over on Vader, and then Eternal will always obviously link your pre-taunting tank, and then the second target will all the time be thrown, so it looks like he's coded to do that. So let's enter Merciless Massacre here. Uh, now here, it, it, I was in kind of a dilemma, right? Who do I go for first? Uh, I know that uh, the, the fake Sith Trooper there, the red one, uh, if I take any out any of the Sith, uh, his allies, he will get a bonus turn, so that could be a problem. But then again, looking at Nihilus there, he will gain bonus turn meter when you apply any debuffs uh, on uh, Trey and Scion. And that could be dangerous as well, because he can uh, increase your cooldowns and, you know, really mess up your run there. Uh, so I was really here juggling, okay, who do I take out first? Uh, but for my testing, best was to take Nihilus out first, because when Sith Trooper does get his bonus turn, on his first turn, he will just cleanse anyway. But because we are using Darth Vader here, dots will just get reapplied. They won't expire. So basically, Sith Trooper will just waste his first uh, bonus turn that he gets. All right, so let's do here uh, AOE now. Uh, get those dots on the board so we can then start, you know, taking somebody out. So here we go. Of course, no counterattacks on Vader's uh, AOE. So just delete Nihilus there. There we go. Uh, Sith Trooper got a bonus turn, but he just used it for cleanse, which did nothing really. And uh, that's why you need a pre taunting tank there, uh, so they, they can take all these counter attacks now here from everybody. Alright, so basing onto Scion. There we go. So we go another Force Crush here, get more dots on the board. Um, and then let's apply tank tech over on Sith Trooper. He decided to swap turn me to Retreya, so I can isolate Scion. Okay, didn't want him to do anything crazy here. And then here I decided to uh, fracture Treya and then take out uh, Sith Trooper. He had critical damage immunity on him there, so I wasn't quite able to take him out. Now from all my testing, I always lose the tank, no matter who, pretty much who I use there. Um, so that's okay, it happens. So we got rid of Sith Trooper, we do not to worry about his bonus turns anymore. And... We've got Isolate on Scion, Fracture on Treya, so I decided there uh, to take out uh, Sith Eternal and check out all this bonus protection on Treya, because Treya will be gaining bonus protection every time uh, you apply <laughs> debuffs uh, on her uh, Sith allies, right? So, 
it'll take some time to get through her. Uh, but Vader should come here in a moment and, you know, take her out. Boom. Oh, it wasn't a critical hit. Alright, let's swap here with uh, Treya. There we go. Get another fracture out. Come on, Vader. Everybody's waiting for a big move here. So we got more debuffs here. Apply even more debuffs with Treya. There we go. And that I hopefully one more calling blade. Boom, there you go. A million damage hit, took care of Trey there, no problem. Alright, so here for our next battle, uh, we'll be going up against Sif Eternal Emperor. Emperor that has Malak uh, and Bastila in there, so it does not have Sif uh, Triumvirate. So this one here is Relic 8, and let me show you his speed. So it's at 533, Relic 7 Bastila, and uh, she's at 286. Relic 7 Watt, and his speed is at 322. Relic 7 Dooku. And he's at 302 speed. And finally, Malak here, uh, modded for tenacity, so at 143%. Now, high tenacity Malaks can be a pain because you might uh, struggle to land debuffs on them. That's why for this particular uh, team, I actually decided to use uh, uh, my Bastilan here uh, because uh, through her unique, she will grant. Uh, as well to leader which is Darth Vader extra potency so hopefully we'll be able to land those debuffs and as well Bastila herself uh, on her fear special ability she applies debuffs so hopefully that will be enough that we can take Malak out right in the beginning so I've got my Bastila here modded for speed and potency okay and then in here I decided you know what I'll just try color and unmask uh, for the tank I was just trying out different pretonic tanks I thought well if maybe Malak uh, gets loose um, at least Kahlo there, he can, you know, just ignore his uh, life drain, like, you know, he doesn't take any damage from that. So I thought maybe versus Malak, Kahlo Ren could be a good choice. I won't show you most from the other guys for this battle because they're the same mods as in my first battle. Alright, so as always, uh, let's start by applying weapon tech over on Vader. And again, Caesar linking your pre-taunting tank and Throne. So Throne sometimes... He doesn't do a whole lot in the, these battles, but at least he absorbs that link uh, from Sif Eternal, which is pretty useful. Now, because my throne here uh, was uh, faster than uh, Bastila, I just decided first to swap Termiter here with Bastila, get some debuffs on Malak. There we go. But unfortunately, my Vader didn't get a turn just yet, so <laughs> I ended up uh, fracturing Malak in the end anyway. Uh, but at least Bastila was able to get some debuffs on him. There we go. Alright, as you can see, pretty much Sith Eternal looks like it's coded to go after Throne, because even there he targeted Throne uh, for the assist, right? Alright, so time to enter Merciless Massacre here. Now here, as you can see, Vader, uh, he's got uh, offense down, critical damage down, so I did not want to uh, do the Culling Blade on Malak just yet. Uh, I wanted first uh, to make sure that those debuffs expire. That's why here I just put a basic on what, and here just target at uh, Culling Blade and Malak, and all those uh, debuffs from Basti were enough that I was able to one shot him there with Culling Blade. And here we go, uh, Force Crush over on Dooku because um, uh, the Force Crush from Vader can't be counterattacked, so I didn't want Dooku counterattacking. Because again, you know, he can stun, he can ability block, and I lost my pre-taunting tank there. So Vader potentially there could get ability block or stunned uh, by Dooku. Alright, so here we go. I just now have to go around do a couple of basic attacks. Alright, so let's see if we can take out now Bastila next. There we go, she's gone. And go after what before he dishes out more tech. Oh, see so there you go. I got a stun over there. So again, uh, Force Crush targeting uh, Dooku there. Lost Throne. As I said, Throne didn't really do much in this battle, but at least, you know, he attracts attention uh, from Sith Eternal Emperor, kind of acting as your secondary tank, if you will. Okay, another Merciless ma Massacre here with Vader. Take out Dooku so we don't need to worry about his counterattacks and everything. Take out Watt, and now just a case of uh, taking out Sith Eternal Emperor. So, as you can see, you know, these matches are pretty straightforward here. Um, I always lose one character, unfortunately. But there we go. Uh, almost got him out. And 
color and MS decided to join the battle finally. Uh, I'll just put another tech over there on Basti. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, see the as emperors. He, his animation just takes so long time. Uh, there we go. That's another win here. So now, as mentioned before, this third and final battle is actually uh, for my Grand Arena, and this was the first time I actually ran uh, Vader versus Sith Eternal Emperor. So maybe it's not uh, the perfect run. Probably if I would do it all over again, uh, but I was doing this for the first time in Grand Arena. Um, but I want to show, even though I was doing this for the first time, it was still pretty effective and pretty easy. Even though you know I made a misplay in the beginning, um, still no issues uh, winning this one in the end. And you know I didn't have a pre-taunting tank as well because it was Grand Arena, uh, and I didn't have all the characters available, such as maybe you know in Squad Arena where you have some good characters like Treya or uh, Bastille available anymore because this team was on the back wall. So literally the only thing I had left was Vader Thrawn um, and um, Watt that could actually do something to. All right. Uh, so here I've just showed you the mods from Palpatine for my team, uh, Emperor Palpatine. All the other four guys are the same mods in the first battle, so I didn't want to waste time here showing mods, my mods all over again. And there we go. So that's the team that you know maybe you would often face in uh, Grand Arena um, because people just put his leftover Sith uh, with um, Sith Eternal Emperor. So here we go. Uh, first uh, weapon tag over on Vader. Sith Eternal again, linking your pre-taunting tank and Thrawn. Alright, so here the mistake I made was I should have taken out the Sith Trooper first. Um, the fake red Sith Trooper, not the real Sith Trooper that's taunting there. Um, probably should have done that first uh, because then his counter-attacks and assists cost me some banners in the end. Um, I don't know. So that was, I said, I was doing this for the first, first time really, so I was just learning. But you know, it's a pretty straightforward match, you just go around. Um, obviously Maul, if he gets his AoE out, he could daze your Vader, uh, that could cause trouble. Um, but you know, he's almost, almost gone there, just from a basic from Vader. Alright, so let's put a tank tech over and Sith Trooper here. And here's, okay, l let's fracture Sith Empire Troopers so I can take... Uh, the fake Sith Trooper out, right? But that was only gear 12 Sith Trooper and the Fracture took him out and then that gave bonus turn there to Sith Trooper which, you know, sniped some banners for me. So it was definitely misplay there straight at the beginning. I should have taken out uh, Sith, the fake Sith Trooper first. Um, because his AOD did, did some good damage on my team as you can see. Alright, here I said, come on guys, let's take him out. Went after their um, mall, and that's the case again of taking out Sith Eternal. Once you're down like this, you know, 4 to 1, Sith Eternal just it doesn't have a whole lot here that he can do about it. I go at least Thrawn can maybe get some protection top top, but probably not enough to recover banners. Um, so we go, pass the meter over to Vader, and uh, that's it. So I regard it was a 51 banner win uh, in Grand Arena. Again, this was the first time I was running this, so I was still figuring out what I need to do. Uh, but I definitely, even though I misplay there um, in the beginning, and I didn't have like you know some of the teams like Bastila or Trey or some of those guys I showed you from Squad Arena, um, it was pretty straightforward to be honest. As long as you have your core of uh, Vader, uh, Watt, and a pre-taunting tank, um, you know you can take on a lot of Sith Eternal teams. And then the fourth and fifth slot, uh, I mean, Throne is good because he attracts attention from Sith Eternal. And then the fifth one, you know, it could be anybody else. Maybe worth mentioning if you're going up against uh, Sith Eternal, they do have um, also Darth Revan in there. Then just in case, you might actually want to swap somebody else to be in the lead. So maybe Throne, put Throne in the lead or Piet if you have him. Then just in case if Darth Revan does get his fear out before your Vader gets a turn, depending on the speeds. Vader won't get feared. Um, so that's probably the only adjustment I would make. But otherwise, I do like Vader lead uh, because of the turn meter removal and as well, Sith Trooper can't cleanse those um, dots from his allies when he gets a turn. So that's why I like Vader lead here the most uh, in most cases. Alright, guys, hope you enjoyed this uh, counter video. Let me know in the comments below 
all on my Discord server, but until then, have fun, enjoy your life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.